Welcome to this week's Short Clip Friday podcast. Each Friday, I'll be posting 10 to 15 minute segments from previous podcasts. And the point here is just to bring you some of the highest yield topics from each podcast in order to kind of reinforce those topics. This clip is from the Genetics Gene Expression podcast and covers transcriptional control and eukaryotes. Enjoy. All right, so on to transcriptional control in eukaryotes. And as I was saying, this is like 10 times more complicated than bacterial regulation. I think a little less common on MCAT from what I can remember, but still important to know. So in eukaryotes, you have transcriptional factors. And so these are proteins that bind to enhancers or silencers in the DNA and affect transcription. And so transcription factors must have a DNA-binding domain. Remember, this is a defining feature of transcription factors, DNA-binding domain. Take the example of chromatin remodeling. So chromatin remodeling involves the opening and closing of chromatin to allow transcriptional machinery to access the DNA. And again, we have euchromatin, which is open chromatin, and this tends to have higher levels of transcription, um, therefore higher levels of gene expression. And on the other hand, we have heterochromatin, which is tightly packed DNA, which has a lot less transcription, if any at all, and less gene expression. And so things like histone acetyltransferases, histone de deacetylases, and histone methyltransferases modify histone prote proteins in order to either open up the chromatin um, or close off the chromatin. However, these factors are not transcription factors, and that's because they don't contain a DNA binding motif. Instead, they bind to um, or modify histones and affect gene expression through, through that route instead of going and directly binding to DNA. So remember that, very important. Just because some protein or some molecule influences gene expression does not mean that it is a transcription factor. Instead, it must have a DNA binding domain. All right, so now back to the region of DNA that these transcription factors bind to. Again, these are called enhancers and silencers. And so enhancers increase transcription when they're bound, and silencers decrease it. And the main difference in eukaryotes compared to prokaryotes in this facet is that Enhancers and silencers can actually be very far away from the promoter, and they can be either upstream or downstream. And the DNA actually forms this kind of loop. It forms this big loop back on itself and so that the transcription factors can be bound to enhancers and their silencers, and uh, this bend causes them to actually be in contact with the promoter. So if you can imagine a long snake, pretend the head is the promoter region and then you know the tail is the enhancer and silencer and so how do you make this these two come in contact with each other while well, you take the snake's head in its tail and you bend it you bend it together and you touch them together this is essentially what happens um, in order for the you know enhancer or the repressor or excuse me the enhancer or the silencer to be in contact with the promoter itself and so, again, the promoter is where the RNA polymerase attaches and, and then transcribes the, or, yeah, transcribes the DNA into mRNA. And in this bend, you're going to have transcriptional factors that bring these two regions of the DNA together. And then you're also going to have mediator proteins that perform this function as well that don't directly bind to DNA, but, you know, bind one transcription factor to another and hold this bend together. So important thing to remember about this is that just the DNA folds over on itself and these transcriptional regulators that are these distal control elements, you know, enhancers or silencers, they're far away from the promoter and must bend in order to get in proximity and exert their control of either increasing or decreasing gene expression. Another important form of gene expression regulation 
comes in the form of post-transcriptional modifications. And so these only happen in eukaryotic cells. So don't think this happens in like bacterial cells. And there are three main post-transcriptional modifications that you're going to need to know for the MCAT. The first is intron exon splicing. The second is the three prime poly A tail. And the third one is the five prime seven methyl guanosine cap. So introns are part of the mRNA transcript that are removed and exons are part of the mRNA transcript that stay in the mature transcript. And so um, it's, it's kind of backwards, it's kind of hard to think about introns you think would be in the transcript, but they're actually out. So just think about it backwards. So introns are removed, exons stay in. And this can happen in different combinations. Um, this is called alternative splicing. So, you know, one transcript you might have the intron 1 removed, and in the other transcript, you won't have that piece of DNA removed in which intron 1 becomes an exon. And so by doing this, you can change the transcript and can control gene expression. A particular example of alternative splicing is called exon skipping. In this mode, a particular exon may be excluded in mRNAs under a particular set of conditions or a particular tissue, and then there this exon is omitted from the mRNA and others. So that's just called exon skipping, which refers to a particular exon of interest. So the second post-translational modification I want to talk about is the addition of a three prime poly A tail. So the poly A tail is added obviously to the three prime end of the transcript and it is important for nuclear export, translation, and also stability of the mRNA. So a longer poly A tail leads to a longer degradation time and therefore this transcript can float around in the cell for longer and uh, more of it can be translated into protein. So that affects um, gene expression. And the last instance of post-transcriptional modification that I want to talk about is the 5 prime uh, G cap or the 5 prime 7 methyl guanosine cap. And so again, this is at the 5 prime, end, 5 prime end of the transcript and it protects against degradation and is very important in being able to be recognized by translation initiation machinery. So this is what helps the ribosome recognize the mRNA transcript. So real quickly, I'm just going to summarize the regulation, gene expression regulation that I've just talked about. So prokaryotes have these things called operons, which are these groups of genes that all have a single promoter, and they're controlled by repressor proteins, which binds to the operator. And then you have activator proteins, which bind to the enhancer, and they kind of do what they sound like they do. Repressors repress, activators activate. And it's important to remember that these operator enhancer genes are very close to the operon or part of the operon. And for eukaryotes, you have enhancer and silencer regions of the DNA that transcription factors bind to and either increase or decrease transcription. And it's important to remember that these regulatory factors can be kind of distant, distantly far away from the promoter. And in order to be in close proximity, the DNA can form these loops. And in both cases for eukaryotes and prokaryotes, you have these promoter regions where the RNA polymerase binds.